What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Onyx Report's Black Masculinist News for the day. I hope you're well. Today, we're getting into a piece that comes out of the Atlanta, uh, AtlantaBlackStar.com entitled, The Harm is Done, Dozens of Convictions Tossed After New York Detective Who Reportedly Had Sixth Sense Is Accused of Falsifying Information. All right. It reads, Prosecutors sought to have 90 convictions thrown out following a review of arrests involving a New York City detective indicted on perjury charges after being accused of lying about drug deals that never happened. On Wednesday, a Brooklyn district attorney vacated dozens of cases investigated by the detective at two separate hearings. Joseph Franco, who, let me go ahead and show you what Mr. Franco looks like so you are aware, especially if he manages to... Uh, wrangle out of this and you see him walking down the street y'all know what it is anyway joseph franco 48 had arrested thousands many on drug charges throughout his two decade career as a detective with the new york police department he was charged with perjury offering a false in instrument for filing and official misconduct in manhattan in 2019 after authorities say he lied about alleged drug deals that video footage showed never occurred I cannot in good faith stand by convictions that principally relied on his testimony, Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez said Wednesday. He said that the mostly low-level cases Franco investigated between 2004 and 2011 should be vacated because of the pending charges against him. I have lost confidence in his work, Gonzalez says. Franco was fired from the police department in April 2020, while Franco's former colleagues, including a lieutenant in the department who acted as his supervisor and a fellow detective, characterized him as one of the best detectives who had a sixth sense for locating drug dealers. Charging documents against Franco indicate that while working undercover in February 2017 and May 2018, he falsely claimed to have witnessed individuals engaged in drug transactions, although security camera footage contradicted his claims in each of the four arrests included in the indictment. Now, I find it interesting, right, that he's actually listed as one of the best detectives. It tells you a little something about how policing is even conceptualized, right? As long as you get the arrest, even if it's the wrong person, even if it's no person at all, it's just somebody you made up and decided to lock up. Many of these men who have been locked up for maybe 15, 16 years who are just now getting out because of this. This is ridiculous. You imagine losing 15 years of your life just because some cop arbitrarily decided that he wanted to make you his victim for the day? What does that do to the sanity of a group of people who know that you can wake up in the morning, leave your home, and you may not come back for 10 to 15 years simply just because somebody decided they didn't like the way you looked and what needed to happen to you? I've had family members that have experienced this kind of thing. And I don't know how many of us don't go crazy over just the mere possibility. And it's not even just limited to incarceration, loss of life entirely. But anyway, I, it continues. Franco touched thousands of cases throughout New York City, and we may never know the full extent of the damage he caused and lives he upended, said Tina Luongo, an attorney with the Legal Aid Society's criminal defense practice. Brooklyn criminal court judge Keisha Espinal vacated more than 50 drug convictions involving Franco on the morning of March 31st and dozens more were scheduled to be vacated later that afternoon. The majority of the 27 felonies and 63 misdemeanor convictions resulting from guilty pleas. The 27 people convicted on more serious drug charges spent between six months and a year in, a pri and year, and a year in prison. The damage is done at the point of arrest, said Luongo. They likely had bail set on them, uh, spent time at Rikers Island, lost job, Rikers Island, lost jobs, were separated from their families. No matter what happens, those harms were done. The three convictions that resulted from his alleged misconduct have been vacated. Franco has pleaded not guilty to the charges against him. The criminal case is pending. So you have the temerity to argue that <laughs> to plead not guilty, even though there's video evidence that you fabricated. It. This is ridiculous. But at the end of the day, my biggest issue is with how many years these men lost at the hands of this cop. And more than that, how many others are doing something similar to meet arrest quotas, to uh, to get promotions in their departments. I mean, it's no problem throwing black men in jail to get your own promotion, to look good on paper, to increase in, uh, your rank status. I mean, there's no problem with that whatsoever, right? 
these men aren't human beings. They're not fathers. They're not grandfathers. They're not husbands. They're just objects to serve as uh, footsteps toward your glory, right? See, part of what I talk about when I talk about institutional misandry is it's not always somebody who comes out and straight says we hate men. It's not always that simple. Sometimes it can be as subtle as arbitrarily arresting them for your own purposes and arresting them more than any other group. Now, obviously, the article doesn't say anything directly about the racial, uh, uh, you know, numbers as far as the people he incarcerated. But this is in BlackAtlanta.com. So I think it's safe to say if you're talking about New York and we're talking about AtlantaBlackStar.com. Yeah, you're more than likely talking about mostly black male prisoners. Or I should say black males incarcerated for crimes they didn't commit. I wonder for the judges, though, if it, you know, I'm surprised they vacated so many cases. I wondered if it was more like speeding tickets. I remember, I had to go to court once for a speeding ticket and I was trying to show tell the judge. I mean, look, I didn't I didn't speed. He said, you know what? It doesn't matter. He said it doesn't matter because one, you can't prove that you weren't standing here in court. He said, but two, we all speed. So when you get a ticket, it's just your turn to pay into something that, you know, we all do. And I was like, that's interesting because I know plenty of people who never get pulled over regardless of how they speed. And I also know people that are able to smile their way out of tickets. And let's be honest, in both cases, most of the people I'm talking about don't have male genitalia, but that's just me, you know. And that's, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, I still think, you know, in terms of um, profiling, that there are always going to be people that get way more attention as far as that than others. And I think that plays into the kind of thing that uh, Joseph Franco here decided to do to these men. And this is terribly sad and ridiculous. And I hope they sue to hell out of that city. But I'm not going to act like this is just New York. We can talk about New York because we have this article, but this is not new. This is not new, nor is it limited to one place. This happens across the board. And by the time you get out of prison, finding employment, come on, especially in this economy, it's ridiculous. Hell, you, you, you're you hard pressed to find housing if you don't have a family to move back in with. And you better hope they're not on any kind of Section 8 because you might violate that if you might, if they find you living there. It's, it's all kind of issues that play into this in all kind of ways that are problematic and frustrating. But at the end of the day, my concern is what we are actually going to be able to do about it. What are black men going to be able to do? Because we know that, that this kind of thing happens and it happens on a regular basis. And we know for the most part, statistically speaking, it's fairly limited to us. And I usually people see, you know, people constantly use black and brown and they try to invoke some type of people of color. <sighs> Look, we, we, we invoke on racial grounds or color grounds. We we invoke people of color. And then on gender grounds, we say black because we try to include black men and women. But we we dance around the reality. This shit happens mostly to black males. Stop tap dancing around the reality of it. Say it. And mean it because we got the data to back it up. We got the data. Look, you know. Hold on. I'm not going to be on here long, but I want y'all to see. I was just using this earlier today. Uh in a class. So I think it's only fair uh, for you guys to be able to see it. So let me go ahead and see if I can push this through. Now I got too much stuff in front of my screen. There we go. All right. Uh, let me see. How can I share this wonderful screen so you guys can see what kind of things I'm talking about. Okay, so it doesn't want to do it that way. All right, so we'll do it this way. Because I do want you guys to at least see what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead. This is slide number nine. Yep. There we go. All right. 
So, here we go. Chart on the left shows us when the prison industrial complex began to kick in into overdrive, and you can see the numbers start to go up in the 70s, right around the time period that the war on drugs kicked off, around the same time period that black men themselves found themselves out of work, right? Deindustrialization kicked in. So right around the same time as you have those two things happening, no jobs, you know, beginning of the drug war. When Nixon's cabinet uh, themselves came out and said this was purposely targeted at hippies and black people. But we're going to sidetrack that and just, you know, just label it. All right. So anyway, so you see on the left, it begins to kick off in the 70s and that's a cross race. But on the right, and I know it may be hard to see, and I apologize about that. Maybe I can enlarge it at least a little bit before we go. So the chart on the right has to do with the, in, uh, the U.S. imprisonment rate per 100,000 by age, race, and sex, right? And if you look at the blue line on each one of those uh, pillars that you see on the chart, that's black males. The green lines are Hispanic. The orange lines are uh, others, other males. The uh, red lines are white males. And then the little stubbly ones at the very bottom are women of the same racial groups. But out of black males, 5% of American society, they are overrepresented when it comes to being incarcerated. But nobody factors in how many of these incarcerations are arbitrary, are trumped up, because there's no mechanism for that. Think about that. If Franco wasn't caught, nothing would have happened. It would have just been listed down as men arrested for the crimes they committed. So we have no idea how many other Francos are out there and nobody cares. So how many black men are locked up and don't have the good fortune of having this come to light and highlight their innocence, even though they had to wait 15 years in some cases to get it. Yeah. So anyway, y'all, thanks for listening. Hope everybody's well. Take it easy. Peace.